A very good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. It is Monday morning and there's lots that's making news. I am Ashwarya Kapoor. Uh, let us start with the headlines. Rajya Sabha Chairman and Lok Sabha Speaker call for all party meetings ahead of budget session from Thursday. Separate meetings with flow leaders as well to ensure smooth functioning of parliament. Mahab Gadbandan formed only to counter government's efforts to crack down on corruption and nepotism, says Prime Minister Modi in Madurai. Targets left government on a Shabri Mala issue at a rally in Thirusur. In Man Ki Baat address, Prime Minister urges youth to vote in all elections, praises Election Commission for ensuring smooth and fair election process. Education must prepare young minds to fearlessly face life challenges, says Vice President M. Vankhya Naidu, calls on civil society to take government health benefits to the poor and needy. And Hardik Panda to play in the third ODI against New Zealand. India put in to field after hosts win the toss. Dhoni rested for the match. India lead the series 2-0. The top story this morning ahead of the budget session of Parliament. Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkhya Naidu and Lok Sabha Speaker Sumitra Mahajan have called a separate all-party meetings. Sumitra Mahajan has called a meeting on 30th of January, while Naidu has invited flow leaders of all parties on the morning of 31st of January before the commencement of the session. Remember, the budget session will begin on 31st of January till 13th of February. The interim budget will be presented on 1st of February. The meetings have been called to ensure for the smooth functioning of their respective houses uh, during the session. Besides these two meetings, the government is also expected to call a similar meeting of leaders of all parties from both the houses on 30th of January, which the Prime Minister may also attend. The, but this budget session will be the last parliamentary session of the NDA government before the general elections. And let's get all the updates from our colleague Vishal Daya, who's joining us on the phone line. A very good morning, Vishal. So stage is really all, uh, you know, getting set uh, for the smooth conduct of the budget session of parliament uh, because uh, Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkhya Naidu as well as uh, Lok Sabha Speaker Sumitra Mahajan have called uh, for separate all-party meetings. What more details you have? Well, that's right, uh, Ashwarya. The stage is all set uh, for the last parliament session of uh, the uh, this NDA government's tenure and uh, this is going to be really important and really crucial as well uh, the uh, duration of uh, this particular session will be almost uh, two weeks that's from 31st of January to uh, 13th of Feb uh, now it begins with uh, uh, the you know the convention is that uh, the uh, chairman of uh, and the speaker of uh, Lok Sabha as well as Rajya Sabha both uh, these presiding officers uh, do call a meeting of uh, the uh, leaders of respective houses to try and, uh, you know, uh, come to a particular uh, understanding as to what are the issues uh, which are likely to be raised in both houses and also to ensure that uh, the uh, proceedings are conducted smoothly. And as you mentioned, uh, it is also, uh, you know, expected that the government uh, will also convene an all-party meeting uh, to try and convey uh, to all the uh, leaders and all the political parties as to what is the agenda of the government in this particular session. Now, this is going to be uh, important, uh, although this is considered, uh, this is uh, termed as a budget session, but uh, it is expected that since uh, the Lok Sabha elections are due, they're around the corner, and uh, this uh, will be happening uh, somewhere in uh, March and April as well. So uh, this is going to be uh, an interim budget which is to be presented uh, by this government. Uh, you know, uh, everybody would be looking forward to the policy guidelines uh, from uh, uh, the NDA government for the rest of uh, the year and rest of the tenure they have. Uh, so it's going to be really, really crucial and really important as well. And that interim budget is uh, slated to be presented on 1st of Feb. Absolutely. So very crucial budget session of Parliament coming up ahead. And it is very important uh, that the session be conducted smoothly. Remember, the winter session of Parliament saw a lot of disruptions. And keeping that in view, both uh, Sumitra Mahajan and M. Venkia Naidu have called for separate all-party meetings to ensure smooth conduct of the House. Thank you so much, Vishal, for all those updates there on that issue.
And on to some other news now on a day-long visit to Tamil Nadu and Kerala on Sunday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi assured justice against the country's economic offenders. Addressing a BJP rally in Madurai, the Prime Minister said that his crusade against corruption and nepotism has... Uh, prompted a grand alliance of opposition parties. He reiterated that the Mahagat Bandhan is formed out of fear and negativity and he urged the youth of the state to reject the forces of negativity. He also laid the foundation stone for an All India Institute of Medical Sciences in the city and also inaugurated a super speciality blocks at medical colleges in Rajaji, Thanjavur and through Nel Valley. The union government effort against corruption has created a star from Chennai to Delhi. All those who were used to making deals in government contracts, defense deals and welfare schemes are now facing the music. That is why they are all coming together. They say that keeping aside all other considerations, they must unite to remove this watchman, however big a group they form, out of fear and negativity. Narendra Modi will stand firmly with the poor. And I call upon the people of Madurai and the youth of Tamil Nadu to reject these forces of negativity. I congratulate you all once again for the new All India Institute of Medical Sciences. And in uh, Kochi, PM Modi dedicated an integrated refinery expansion complex of the Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited to the nation. He said that the NDA government has taken decisive steps to bring down a crude oil import by 10% and save a precious foreign exchange for the country. He added that the centre is promoting the use of CNG by expanding the coverage of a city gas distribution network to overcome environment pollution. He also laid the foundation stone for a petrochemical complex at the refinery and a skill development institute at Ittumanur. To overcome environment pollution, the government of India is promoting the use of environment-friendly transport fuel, that is CNG, by expanding the coverage of city gas distribution network in the country. The government has thought of developing additional 15,000 kilometers of gas pipeline network to cut down on import of crude oil, government has taken decisive steps towards reducing imports by 10% and saving precious foreign exchange. And uh, in uh, Thrissur, uh, PM Modi spoke uh, on the Shabrimala issue and he blamed the Kerala government for attacking the cultural ethos of the southern state. The issue of the Sabrimala temple has caught the attention of the entire nation. The people of India are seeing the manner in which the communist government of Kerala are disrespecting all aspects of Kerala's culture. I fail to understand why the communists are undermining our culture and civilization which has stood the test of time over centuries and in the first radio address of the year 2019 prime minister modi urged the listeners to cast their votes in the elections on Man Ki Baat, the PM Modi called casting of vote a sacred duty and said that who, those who do not use the, the democratic right uh, should feel the pain of not exercising their franchise. He also hailed the role of the Election Commission for its meticulous organizing abilities in holding polls and appreciated the Election Commission for relentlessly striving to ensure the strengthening of democracy. He also urged uh, to the eligible youth to register themselves as voters. The PM also praised the students involved in the launch of a Kalam Sat satellite last week. 
मैं युवा पीढ़ी से आग्रह करता हूं कि अगर वे मतदान करने के लिए पात्र हैं तो खुद को जरूर मतदाता के रूप में रजिस्टर करवाएं हम में से प्रत्येक को एहसास होना चाहिए कि देश में मतदाता बनना मत के अधिकार को प्राप्त करना और जीवन की महत्वपूर्ण उपलब्धियों में से एक महत्वपूर्ण पड़ाव है साथ साथ मतदान करना ये मेरा कर्तव्य है ये भाव हमारे भीतर पनपना चाहिए जीवन में कभी किसी भी कारण से अगर मतदान नहीं कर पाए तो बड़ी पीड़ा होनी चाहिए कभी कहीं देश में कुछ गलत होता हुए देखें तो दुख होना चाहिए हाँ मैंने वोट नहीं दिया था उस दिन मैं वोट देने नहीं गया था इसका ही खामियाजा आज मेरा देश भुगत रहा है हमें इस जिम्मेदारी का एहसास होना चाहिए यह हमारी वृत्ति यह हमारी प्रवृत्ति बननी चाहिए देश आजाद होने से लेकर 2014 तक जितने स्पेस मिशन हुए हैं लगभग उतने ही स्पेस मिशन की शुरुआत बीते चार वर्षों में हुई है हमने एक ही अंतरिक्ष यान से एक साथ 104 सैटेलाइट लॉन्च करने का वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड भी बनाया है हम जल्द ही चंद्रयान टू अभियान के माध्यम से चांद पर भारत की मौजूदगी दर्ज कराने वाले हैं हमारा देश स्पेस टेक्नोलॉजी का उपयोग जान माल की रक्षा में भी बखूबी कर रहा है अनु संवाद न्यूज डे वन ऑफ द ऑक्शन ऑफ द गिफ्ट्स रिसीव्ड बाय प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी सौ स्टैचू ऑफ छत्रपति जी शिवाजी महाराज विद बेस प्राइस ऑफ वन थाउजेंड रुपीज गेटिंग सोल्ड एट ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड रुपीज द फंड रेज थ्रू द ऑक्शन हेल्ड एट द नेशनल गैलरी ऑफ मॉडर्न आर्ट डेली विल गो टू द गवर्नमेंट फ्लैगशिप प्रोजेक्ट Namami Gange now a dedicated site has been set up to display an e auction the mementos that are priced between uh, 100 rupees to 30000 rupees the visitors uh, to the site can uh, search through the mementos on the basis of price range the two day physical auction uh, shall culminate to, uh, and uh, the e auction will take place uh, from uh, 29th to 31st of january for the remaining items that are not sold during the physical auction on the portal the exclusive items that were auctioned included statues photographs paintings and articles like shawls commemorative coins traditional musical instruments and likewise also items such as the statues of uh, gautam bud portraits photographs and uh, paintings of the prime minister 3d painting of a uh, gomukh statue of uh, Swami Vivekanand and silver coated shivling were also auctioned at a high price. Union Minister for Railways and Commerce Sir Piyush Goyal, members of Parliament Manoj Tiwari and Meenakshi Lekhi visited the auction along with other dignitaries and senior officials. In breakfast news, uh, we'll take a very short break here. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more news. art arisen from a multi-hued cultural canvas <laughs> tradition and cultural fervor dating back centuries and encircling them all there's a magic that awes embrace your nation's brilliant human warmth watch colors of india sundays at 9:30 pm on rajya sabha television For centuries Delhi has been known for waterworks given the vast number of kingdoms in the city Among the earliest ones was a dam at Anangpur village the city believed to be built by Rajput king Anangpal Tomar This unique Indian hydraulic engineering structure was built around 8th century running 50 meters long and standing 7 meters high 
This dam was more of a water harvesting structure meant to store rain water during the monsoon season. Located close to Anangpur village lies Surajkund, the waterworks which is regarded as among Delhi's first organized reservoir. Built in the shape of rising sun with an eastward arc, it's enclosed with a steep embankment made in semicircular shape of stepped stones. These reservoirs took care of need of the city at the time of the shortage of water, given Delhi's topography and warm weather spells. Also, once existed a magnificent sun temple near the Surajkund Reservoir. Welcome back after the break. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu inaugurated the Godavari Auditorium in Delhi on the occasion of the Platinum Jubilee celebration of Andhra Association. While addressing the gathering, Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu appreciated the efforts of Andhra Association in rendering services in education and health sector. He said that education being the foundation of every child should not focus on ranks and grades. It should prepare the young minds to face the challenges of life fearlessly. He also stressed on the need of involving civil societies and NGOs in providing uh, government health benefits to the poor and needy. Chief Vigilance Commissioner K.V. Chaudhary was also present on the occasion. There are schools run by even Andhra Educational Association. They are all open to all other people. That is our culture. We must continue that tradition. We must take care of all people. And the 29th of January hearing in the Ram Jan Bhumi Babri Masjid, the long uh, land title dispute case has been cancelled. The decision was taken due to non-availability of uh, one member, Justice uh, A.S.A. A. Bobley of uh, the five-judge constitution bench. The bench, headed by CGI Ranjan Gogoi, comprises of four other senior judges of the Apex Court. The next date of hearing is uh, not announced as yet. The five-judge bench was reconstituted on 25th of January as a Justice UU Lalit, who was a member of the original bench, had recused himself from hearing the matter. <coughs> the Indian Railways has named the indigenously manufactured semi-fast train 18 as the Vande Bharat Express. The 16-coach train is India's first locomotive-less train, which is built in uh, 18 months at a cost of 97 crore rupees by Chennai's integral coach factory. Uh, the fully air-conditioned train will halt at uh, Kanpur and Allahabad stations and will also have uh, two executive chair cars. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is likely to flag off the train soon, which will ply between Delhi and is the Lok Sabha constituency, Varanasi. <clears throat> Vande Bharat Express पूर्ण रूप से भारत में बनाई गई डिजाइन की गई हमारे भारत के इंजीनियरों के द्वारा इसका निर्माण किया गया हमारे भारत के रेल कर्मचारियों ने इसको इंटीग्रेटेड कोच फैक्ट्री चेन्नई में बनाया और ये वंदनीय उपलब्धता को हम वंदे भारत एक्सप्रेस के नाम से दिल्ली से बनारस तक चलाएंगे there is an ever-increasing backlog of pending cases in India's lower courts. According to the latest data by the law ministry, each high court judge is uh, saddled with 4,419 pending cases, with each judge of the subordinate judiciary having 1,288 cases pending. According to the National Judicial uh, Data Grid, at the end of 2018, 2.91 crore cases were pending with the district and subordinate courts and 47.6 lakh cases were pending in 24 high courts. The data also presents the shortage of judges and officers in the courts. While the sanction strength of the subordinate court is 22,644, the working strength is only 17,509, which means that the courts are 5,135 judicial officers short. Similarly, in the high courts, the sanction strength is uh, 1,079, but the working strength is only 695, a shortfall of uh, 384 judges. 
Big story coming in from Haryana where uh, Baipol for the Jind Assembly constituency is taking place uh, today. The constituency is witnessing a multi cornered contest uh, with the prestige at stake for key political outfits including the ruling BJP and the opposition INLD. Congress and uh, the fledging uh, JJP formed by Lok Sabha MP Dushyant Chautala after split in the INLD. Remember the Baipol was, re was necessitated following the death of uh, international Lok the legislator Hari Chand Midha in August last year. Now, as many as 1,71,113 people, including nearly 80,000 women, are eligible to vote. 158 polling stations have been set up, of which 67 are in rural areas. The votes will be polled between 7 in the morning to 5 p.m. and counting of votes will take place on 31st of January. The top international focus, uh, two bombs at a Roman Catholic Cathedral in southern Philippines uh, have killed uh, 20 people and injured dozens more. The first blast happened at 8.45 a.m. local time inside the Cathedral of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, which uh, has been hit by bombs in the past as well. And the second explosion was uh, shortly afterwards on the doorstep of the church. The first blast happened as Sunday mass was being celebrated. A second device exploded outside as soldiers responded. The Islamic State group said that it was behind the attack on uh, Jolo Island where jihadist groups are active. The attack came days after a Muslim majority area in the region voted for greater autonomy in a referendum. Jolo has uh, long been a base for militants, including those of uh, the Abu Sayyaf group. Now, several of its factions have declared allegiance to the Islamic State group. Most of the victims are civilians. And sports news now, where the third one international of the five-match series between India and New Zealand is underway at Bay Oval. After winning the toss, New Zealand has elected to bat first and uh, they have lost two wickets in quick succession. Now, first to fall was opener Colin Munro, who was caught by Rohit Sharma on Mohammed Shami's delivery, while uh, Martin Guptill also lost his early wicket to Bhuvneshwar Kumar. New Zealand's uh, skipper uh, Kane Williamson and uh, Ross Taylor are batting. They are at the crease. Remember, India is leading the five-match series 2-0. Good news uh, from the world of badminton. Ace Indian uh, shuttler Saina Nehwal lifted the Indonesian Masters for the first time after three-time world champion Carolina Marine of Spain limped out of the final due to a leg injury. Saina Nehwal was trailing 4-0 in the opening game when Carolina Marine decided to withdraw from the contest. Marine made a good start and uh, took uh, two early points as well, but an injury brought a premature end of the match. Winner, where... Uh, Marine, leading 9-2, landed uh, badly on her right leg. After medical uh, time out, uh, Marine tried to continue, but she eventually collapsed to the ground and limped out of the match. And top seed uh, Novak Djokovic uh, beat uh, world number two Rafael Nadal to claim a record seventh Australian Open men's singles title. Djokovic defeated Nadal in straight sets uh, to lift the title in just two hours and four minutes uh, to win his 15th Grand Slam. With the seventh Australian Open uh, title, Djokovic surpassed Roger Federer as well as Roy Emerson, who both won six Australian Open uh, men's singles titles. The victory extended his win-loss record against Nadal to 28-25. to Djokovic has now also completed a hat-trick of a Grand Slam, so following his wins at the Wimbledon and the US Open. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks for watching. Have a lovely day ahead.